Zoe is a very busy child. She's always on the go. She loves being outdoors most of the time, riding the bike, jumping on the trampoline, all of that kind of stuff. We were quite shocked when we first found out that Zoe was profoundly deaf. Zoe is ASD level three and has a chromosomal disorder which has led to an intellectual disability. Zoe's developmental age is more like a two and a half to three year old. Zoe wears cochlear processes, we call them ears. Because of Zoe's autism, sometimes her ears are too much so she will pull them off. She can't hear anything without them. It's a lot of small things that your average family would probably take for granted that we aren't able to do so easily. Zoe is a runner and she also is prone to have meltdowns when we're out. The work that we do definitely makes me proud to be part of the Benevolent Society. I'm responsible for supporting families with understanding and accessing the NDIS for their children that have either been identified with a developmental delay or a diagnosed disability. And I'll never forget the first time Dion came to the house. We spent a lot of time discussing Zoe's sort of challenging behaviours. It was clear that there was a lot more happening within the household and how her support needs were impacting the relationship between her siblings and parents and the family as a whole, particularly with Zoe's older sister, Emma. Emma's role has been different from your typical big sister in that she's been an extra carer for Zoe. Zoe's meltdowns being a little bit physical at time, I could see Emma sort of flinching away and being a little bit scared of her sister. She was having to undertake roles that were far beyond her years. Through the process of working with Zoe and Kim, we've now been able to access a support worker that's actually funded to come out and do some regular hours and routines with them. Once Dion had helped me and, and we finally did get the support worker, he called me personally to tell me that the funds were going to be approved and I just, I cried because I knew our lives were going to change. It's been an amazing change, all of these small things that we just never did, it's too stressful to venture out. Walking is a big outlet for Zoe. It's a way for her to calm down. She has been known to walk over 30 kilometers in one day. But we don't know what the future holds. I tell people that Zoe one day will do marathons and I'll drive beside her in a golf buggy and we'll go across Australia and they laugh and I'm like, no, no, I'm dead serious. It's nice knowing that you are making a genuine difference for these families and that they're getting to experience things that they wouldn't normally be able to do without supports like the NDIS and the Benevolent Society to help them through that journey. Everybody should have an opportunity to live their best life. Working with Dion, he taught me a lot, but I'm definitely a better advocate for Zoe and for the help that she needs. I can't imagine having to do this by myself without the Benevolent Society. It's made a big difference for us in getting the help that we needed to be a more average family, which is just what we want to be.